Hi, I'm G. Welcome back to my art channel and in this video I'm showing you how to do some graffiti using watercolour markers. So after penciling out the whole design, the first thing I do is I ink all of the lines and I'm using a waterproof ink pen for this because of course I'm going to be using watercolour markers and I'm using a 0.3 fine liner. It's a pit pen by Faber-Castell and it's on 300 GSM Bockingford watercolour paper. Now that might seem quite a thin ink line that you can see me doing, but when the whole thing is finished, if I need to make any of the ink lines a bit thicker or bolder, I can easily do that. This piece of graffiti is one that I've had lying around in a folder for about five years now and never got around to actually doing. So I have to thank two of my subscribers that suggested that I should try using watercolors with something other than flowers. So here we go. So with the inks done, it's time for me to start adding the color. And I decided to do the letters first. And because the letters are eventually going to be purple, what you can see me doing is laying down a base coat here of a very, very lightest color first. So I'm going to work my way back to being dark, which is the classic way that you use watercolors. You start light and you go dark, usually. So I put on the raw color and now you can see me adding water to it and blending the water with the color using a Kurataki water brush. Normally I would just use a regular brush, dip it in water and keep adding the water and moving it around. But when I was doing some rough pieces for this to figure out what would work and what would I was using a water brush for that and I found it worked really really well it's got a synthetic tip which has got a good bit of kind of stiffness but also springiness to it and it was really good at blending the color and the water together so I thought when it comes to the final piece why not just use a water brush for this too so now you see my approach in real time I just time lapse this next section so you can see how I cover all of the main shapes and letters the bits that I want to be in the foreground with this base coat of rose pink ready for the darker shades of purple that I'm going to add later on. And you can see because it's a base color I'm not too fussy with it I just scribble the color on because I know once I start adding water I can move it around and give it a slightly more painterly kind of look. Now you can see me adding my second colour. So this is like my mid-tone and this is Quinacridone Magenta. It's got a fantastic title but it's got an even more fantastic bright kind of purpley magenta colour. And uh, I put that on again like raw marker and now I'm blending it with the water brush again. And I'm trying not to be too fussy because of course any kind of watercolour as a water-based medium can blend with the colour underneath if you work it around too much and you're trying to blend and blend and blend too much. So I'm adding the water, getting the colour activated and then just quickly moving it around on the surface, not trying to be too fussy at all. And uh, when I get to the kind of rough edge that you can see, what I'm doing there is relying on the paint, that, the pigment, which is on the tip of the water brush to then allow me to sort of carry some color forwards and make a sort of like a curvy swirly edge and also pop in some little bits of bubbles, you know, like it's a spray that's been sprayed across that section. And it's left a bit of splatter along the edge. It stops it having, having such a, a hard edged kind of color to it. And if you're wondering why I'm using the color purple and what the STP stands for, um, this is a tribute piece that I started five years ago for a band that I used to be into when I was a kid, um, Stone Temple Pilots, a grunge band from the 90s. Uh, and unfortunately, they lost their original lead singer back in, I think it was 2015. And it was at that point that I started this idea, but it never really got made. It really never got to fruition or, or beyond the sketchbook stage. So I was really grateful of a chance to sort of go back, revisit it and um, try to get um, it sort of like done and dusted uh, and a sort of final tribute made. And the reason it's purple is because uh, one of their albums was called Purple. So a lot of the symbols that you see in this graffiti are based around ideas from their album covers or their album titles, like little Easter eggs. And after putting the light and midtones on the letters, I thought what I wanted to do here was get the shadows put in. So you can see me adding my two colors for blue in the shadows. And I'm using the gorgeous shade Thalo Blue and also an indigo just to give those shadows a little bit of darkness towards the sort of edges, corners um, that you can see on the letters. And what I'm trying to do is put the color towards the two very edges and then I sort of leave the middle bit white, you can see. And I work the two colors towards each other in the middle. So they're going from dark to light and then dark again. Then you can see me filling in that little star at the top right. Now that really dark color you just saw me using the very tips of that star is the dark color mauve that I'm also going to use to be my darkest shade of this kind of um, purple color scheme. So I've put on my pale rose, I've put on my uh, quinacridone magenta and now I'm adding mauve or mauve to be the third and final dark shade. And with this one what I did was I added it 
but then I didn't actually add water. I used the watercolor marker just like a regular marker because I was a little bit worried if I put on this third shade and started trying to blend it together with water, it was going to pick up and mix with the colors underneath and it might have made it a bit too light and it might have mixed with the magenta and the rose. So I thought, well, why don't I use it just like a normal marker? Because it's called a watercolor marker. Let me use it like a marker. So I put the color straight on top and then I just left it. And that's what you can see me doing now across the tops of all of these letters. So I've got mauve and it's untouched. It's neat, it's raw marker. You might have also noticed that it's a sort of top heavy color scheme. Usually when I'm doing graffiti, I will work the shadows towards the very base of the letters and get lighter as I get towards the top. But you know, I've done that before, so I thought I'd flip it with this one and do dark at the top towards light at the bottom, just to give it a different visual look. Now you can also see me putting on some more raw marker that I don't touch, and it's actually going over some of the areas where I'd put a bit of marker earlier and then just gently washed it out. So it was dark against the edge and then lighter towards the, the sort the rest of the letter, but I'm just putting on raw marker there untouched. Now I move on to the heart, and I tried a different water brush there you might have seen for just a quick second, uh, a Derwent water brush, but loads of water came out and it wasn't as good as the Kuritake water brush. So I flipped back to using the Kuritake one, and I'll have to see if I can get to grips with the Derwent one another time. If you've used the Derwent water brushes, leave a comment below telling me if you think they're good, worth sticking with, or whether you had a few problems with them as well. After doing the sort of red apple top and bottom, I'm doing the core in the middle. I'm just using two shades of green for that, sap green and also hooker's green. And at this point, I couldn't wait to add some classic white highlights to the edge of my letters. So my light source, I'm thinking about sort of like Northwest, uh, shining down on the letters. And I had such trouble finding a white pen that would work with these highlights. Because it was going over watercolor on the paper, um, all of the pens I was using was picking up the watercolor and it was not giving me a really, really strong white line. I tried Poscas, I tried Jelly Rolls, I tried even Tipex pens at one point. They just weren't working. Uh, but luckily, uh, I have a local shop that stores um, Uniball Signo white gel pens and it was almost a last resort, but it actually totally didn't let me down. It was absolutely brilliant. And now you can see me zoom out and start tackling the background. And for this, I'm using a lot of orange here, cadmium orange hue, because I'd done the purple letters. So I was thinking, what kind of color scheme can I use for this? And I thought I'd go with a secondary color scheme. So looking at colors like purple, orange, and green. Um, and I've used a secondary color scheme before quite successfully with um, the panda bamboo graffiti that I did a while back. Um, so I was thinking I'll do the same here, but I'll really go easy on the green, hardly any green, and mostly rely on orange and purple. So that's why I'm using a lot of orange in the background there. And it is a really, really lovely color, but I'm not just laying down some sort of like washes there. I am going to actually put some work over the top of those. So this is, again, just a base coat of orange that I'm putting across all of the background design, first of all. And luckily, another color that goes really well with orange is the kind of phthalo blue that I've decided to use in all of the shadows. So here you can see me also finishing off the shadows. I'd done the shadows on the letters, but now it was time for me to finish off doing those blue shadows um, across the entire design. And all of the shadows, the edges of them, they should all correspond and meet with a vanishing point that I put underneath the small orange star at the very bottom of the picture. Just underneath there was my vanishing point. So if I traced all of the edges of the shadows, shadows, they should all converge at that vanishing point. It's not something that you totally need to do with shadows in graffiti, and I've seen some people doing them really differently, but that's what I decided to do um, for this one. With the bulk of the main letters and designs done, it's time for me to zoom in a little bit, and now you can see me tackling some of the other little bits and pieces, um, like this star, which is the tail end of the S, and I just use the exact same three colors that I've used on the letters to do the shadows and shading on that adding some white highlights to the heart and also adding some bits to that little circle underneath the T, which is supposed to be a sort of example of the Earth's core. So you've got the inner core, the outer and the mantle and a little bit of cadmium yellow hue on a star, which I'm going to come back to and make 3D in a bit. Now you can see me adding some extra little visual design to the background. It was a plain orange, like I said, a base coat. But now you can see me following the contours of some of the shapes in the picture to put overlapping orange lines and orange sections across um, that orange background, just to give it a bit more visual pop and a bit of interest. Here you can see me finishing off the star by adding two different colors. I've got orange and some raw sienna on there just to give it a little bit of shadow to make it look as though it's one of those kind of 3D pointed kind of stars. 
and each of those extra orange layers is just raw marker. It's orange marker put on and untouched. I finish off these little musical symbols at the bottom using the same colors from the letters and a bit of water. And then I decide that I wanna make the letters really stand out against the background. So I go with a black outline around all of the letters and anything that's sort of touching them directly. And for this, I toyed with using a Sharpie, but um, I then realized I really wanted to do as much of the picture as possible using watercolor markers. So I was kind of lucky that I found lamp black amongst my aqua markers, and I was able to use that to do a much more thick, solid uh, black outline around the entirety of the letters. And I'm glad that I did that, because I really feel as though it made the letters really pop and stand out. Then I sort of zoom out and you can see me going in with the white Signo gel pen and I'm adding highlights to all of the other shapes in the picture. So the apple core, all of those orange shapes in the background as well. Just want to give them that little sort of white shiny effect that looks so good when you see graffiti on the wall when they've just you know given it a white sort of swish. So I go in with the white gel pen and decide to add that. And then I want to give the whole thing an overall outline. And here's where I sort of jump away from using the watercolor markers and I'm using a pale blue um, Posca pen here. And that allows me to also put in some little splats like it's a sprayed outline and the ink has spluttered and splatted at certain points. So that's what you can see me just putting in as pretty much just the final touches on this entire design. And that's the final design for my graffiti tribute to the Stone Temple Pilots. I had so much fun doing this and I'm so glad that I revisited an older idea and finally got it finished. And if you liked it too, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. And maybe check out my previous video, which was uh, a graffiti mashup of Star Wars ideas and also Spurs Football Club, all wrapped up in this sort of graffiti shell. Thanks so much for watching.